when you read a poem from the past, you're not directly engaging with it. Someone has already taken the material, edited it, put punctuation in, put notes in it, and they've helped you read it. And when they do that, they shape your reading in ways that you're not usually aware of. So Leah Knight and I thought, what if we made a project where someone entered the canon with different versions of these poems available to the reader at that moment when the reader first read these works? Hester Poulter is a little bit of a cipher. There are speculations that one can make when reading her poetry that she wrote for a very limited audience, mainly her family. And there might have been something liberating about being able to say whatever you thought because it wasn't going to circulate widely. For whatever reason, the manuscript went underground for about 350 years until a graduate student in 1996 was working on a digital cataloging project at Leeds. And he noticed this amazing manuscript that had 120 poems and an unfinished romance. So he began to write about Hester Poulter and scholars began to sort of trickle over to Leeds to look at that manuscript. The Poulter Project began with Leah Knight and I reading this woman's works in manuscript and thinking that people needed to teach these amazing poems. Several years ago, we convened a workshop of a variety of scholars and asked them to consider Poulter's verse in two different ways think about it from two different angles, edit it differently, anthologize it differently, digitize it differently. And as a result of that workshop, the Poulter Project was born. So mainly we wanted to have a lot of versions, both for comparison and to reach different audiences. One of those audiences is the general reader who simply would like to read Hester Poulter's poems. So we needed to have what we called the elemental edition, which is where the editor punctuates the poems very clearly, perhaps sometimes erasing some ambiguity, but making it possible that you can read the poems pretty readily. The biggest advantage of a digital edition over a traditional printed scholarly work is to show our readers the scholarly process that goes into bringing a historical figure like her into view and into being. <laughs> The digital platform allows us to allow many more editorial voices and approaches to be foregrounded. It allows us to really critique what scholarly editing is and what it can be. They've assembled a really amazing team. People who are coming at Poulter from slightly different angles with different preoccupations and who are therefore bringing very different things to the texts. We are really drawing Hester Poulter into all kinds of conversations. If you're talking about women's relationship to the emergence of experimental science, natural history and observation, women's relationship to the classics, I mean, it's a long list, and we're pulling Poulter into those conversations and making it hard to exclude or ignore her. Our intention is to continue to build the network of collaborators and contributing editors, the inclusion of all of Poulter's poems, as well as exhibits that contextualize them and that bring Poulter to a wider readership than was ever possible before. One of her themes is how can you preserve the essence of yourself when you are subject to a body that decays? It's really interesting that her works survived time and perhaps it is in keeping with her sense of the transmutation of the cosmos to imagine her book becoming something that I think of as very abstract. The digital project returns us to that issue of what is material and what is immaterial.